everybody. My name is Eli. My name is Jason. My name is Caden. My name is Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we know that your time is very valuable, and we appreciate your time extremely. And we thank you guys for joining our family, and we have a ginormous digital family here. We just extended our table, and we see that all of you are sitting around our table, and we appreciate it. And we thank you guys very much, and we are in the middle of doing what, Jade? We are going through the Torah and looking for commands. And what is the Torah, Eli? The Torah is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Yep, and if anyone hears any kind of rain or anything on the background, we just we just started up and the rain came, so we're not going to let Hasatan ruin this. So I think you guys will be able to hear it just fine. Caden, tell me a little bit about the Torah. Now, this Torah is what the Christians say is on the cross. It is gone because our, our Messiah, Yahushua, came and he abolished the Torah. Can you tell me if I am right or if I am wrong? You are wrong. How am I wrong? Well, uh, Yeshua says he did not come to destroy the Torah, but to fulfill it. There's Oh, he said fulfill. That means it's over, my friend. Nope, fulfill meant to do. There's several times in the Bible where, Ye where Yahuwah told his servants, he goes, go fulfill my command, and the commands were still there. So, Okay, and some of these hard commands were into number, what, 15 or 16? 16. I think 16. I think it starts in 12. We, get, we start in 12, I think. 12 what? Verse 12, where we're at? Uh, we're actually in 10, I think. But oh, yeah. we're talking about the commandments. Oh, yeah. So this is, oh, hey, there's a family picture. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Um, 15. So we're on 15, and a quick, we'll just go from 15 down to 1. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of the Yahuwah. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Guard Yahuwah's covenant. Walk before me and be perfect. Don't eat or don't drink the blood. Every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Master sin, man and woman should build their own families. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Have dominion over all living creatures. Subdue it. And it's talking about the land, the owl, or not the owls, the animals. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living thing. Replenish the earth. Multiply. Be fruitful. Now these are the commands that the Christian religion has said do not apply to us anymore. So if that is the case, we shouldn't be fruitful, we shouldn't multiply, we shouldn't replenish the earth, we shouldn't subdue it, we shouldn't have dominion over it, and yada, yada, yada. So here we go. So here we are. We are in Exodus 10, and I'm sorry if it makes some noise. i got to pop my thing out here. Okay, so we start with Exodus 10. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart, and this heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. And that you may tell in the ears of your son and of your son's son what things I have wrought in Mitzrayim and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know that I am Yahuwah. And Moshe and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of the Ivrim, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if you refuse to let my people go, Behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into your coast. Okay, guys, where what plagues have we seen already? What where where are we at? Alright, we've seen blood in the river. We've seen Blood in the river. We've seen hail, we've seen flies. Flies. We had gnats. Frogs. 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 Boils. All their animals Boils. died. Boils. All their animals have died so far. And if you are just joining us, I would strongly urge you to start at the beginning of Genesis where we're at. So you know where we're at, but we are in the middle of Egypt, which is actually called Mitzrayim, um, the correct terminology of it. And we are dealing with Pharaoh, or Yah is dealing with Pharaoh right now. And we are continuing on. So he's about to bring locusts on the coast. Verse 5. And they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth. And they shall eat the remnant of that which is escaped, which remains unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which grows for you out of the field. And they shall fill your houses, and the houses of all your servants, and the houses of all the Mitzrayim, which neither your fathers nor your father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve Yahuwah Elohim. Know you not yet that Mitzrayim is destroyed. And so here's a, you know, here's a, a question, I suppose, is why didn't they just chuck a spear at Moshe? What kind of spiritual protection did Moshe have 
that he's able to go threaten an, an entire violent country. This, these guys are extreme. Egyptians are violent. They're violent people. Uh, at the beginning, stuff. I think maybe what went through Pharaoh's head is like, hey, it's just one guy. Put him back to work. We just better not lose our work or it's threatening me. And then after a few plagues, he'd be like, uh, let's kill this guy. Let's yeah, but why didn't? Why right now? So these maybe guys are like, it's probably, it's probably fear. Pro pro yeah, probably lions bow down to him. So he's probably fear. But these this guys, they would have walked up to Pharaoh. They had to get near him, close enough to him, which means there's there's always guards. I just don't know, and I don't know why he didn't have like a whole bunch of guards with a whole bunch of sharpened up spears. And all right, guys, all at the same time, chuck your spears. I don't know. I don't have answers to that. Anyone? No, uh, I maybe it's just fear because he saw what he can do in the land. He's like, man, if I kill this guy, we're all we're all doomed. Maybe he's he's starting to know who Elohim is. <laughs> and Moshe and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go serve Yahuwah Elohim. But who are they that shall go? And Moshe said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds. Will we go? For we must hold a feast unto Yahuwah. And he said unto them, Let Yahuwah be so with you as I will let you go. And your little ones, look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve Yahuwah, for that ye did desire, and that a were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. So there again, why didn't they spare him? But, and Yahuwah said unto Moshe, stretch out your hand over the land of Mitzrayim for the locusts, that they may come up on the land of Mitzrayim and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail has left. And Moshe stretched forth his rod over the land of Mitzrayim, and Yahuwah brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over all the land of Mitzrayim and rested in all the coasts of Mitzrayim. Very grievous were they. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hell had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through, through all the land of Mitzrayim. And Pharaoh called for Moshe and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against Yahuwah Elohim, and against you. Now therefore forgive, I pray you. My sin only this once, and entreat Yahuwah Elohim, that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated Yahuwah. And Yahuwah turned a mighty, strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coasts of Mitzrayim. But Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Yashrael go. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Stretch out your hand toward the heavens, that there may be darkness over the land of Mitzrayim, even darkness which may be felt. And Moshe stretched forth his hand toward the heavens, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Mitzrayim, three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Yashrael had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moshe and said, Go ye, serve Yahuwah, only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moshe said, You must also give... You must give us also sacrifices and ascending smoke offerings that we may sacrifice unto Yahuwah Eloheinu. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not be a hoof be left behind, for thereof must we take to serve Yahuwah Eloheinu. For, and we know not with what we must serve Yahuwah until we come thither. But Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get you from me. Take heed to yourself, see my face no more, for in that day you see my face, you shall die. And Moshe said, you have spoken well, I will see your face again no more. And we're into chapter 11, any commandments, anyone? Nope. Nothing. Any comments? Um, some sort of abuse towards Pharaoh, man. He's just like, the land is, like, Pharaoh is like psychotic at this point, man. He's like... The He's, land is pitch black, right? That's not good. You need sun for your crops to grow. All the crops, crops size, left. Yeah, nothing's nothing left. left. You need locally. sun for any productivity whatsoever. Because back then they didn't have like power so you flip on a light and go do your jobs. Yeah. They didn't have any of that. So. And I now mean, you have carcasses. We we discussed that last time. You had all these rotting yeah, carcasses yeah, all over. Egypt and this dude's just gone. like uh, he's like he's insane. Where he just won't let the people go, and there's nothing left of Egypt. Yeah, but it's not it's not even his fault. Abuse towards Pharaoh. Yeah, Yahoo is making an example of him and showing his might. 
you know, giving this little 18, this guy's 18 inches tall. This guy's 18 inches tall of uh, fury at this point. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> real angry. But yeah. it's not his fault. It's like, he's like, please go. And then he goes like, a little more. Yeah, no. He, he, he must have really angered y'all. Like, he must have like, we ought to do this to him. Yeah, probably. He had to be really angry. Probably a ruthless individual. All right. X is 11-1 and the rain is coming, so we're just going to keep it rolling. So uh, pretend that is a, a uh, peaceful sound. And Yahoo has said unto Moshe, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Mitzrayim. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. I can't believe he didn't surely thrust him through with some spirit. Yeah, this dude's <laughs> caused some problems. Yeah. <laughs> Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. So now they're about to, not only have they destroyed everything in this land, there's nothing left, now they're about to pillage the people. Take everything they have. <laughs> yeah, there's everything. literally Stop. nothing left in Egypt. And if you read into the books, the extracurricular books, I think it's Jasher, it talks about how Yah uh, bound, or they bound Hasatan for these days, uh, that he would not, you know, basically that these people, like, uh, they gave up. Yeah. yeah, they got manhandled. And they, they didn't even have the guilt of, like, oh, I can't give away my stuff. So... And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the sight of Mitzrayim. Moreover, the man Moshe was very great in the land of Mitzrayim. Not sure how. (laughs) In the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. And Moshe said, Thus says Yahuwah, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Mitzrayim, and all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sits upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And guys, we're super sorry about the sound. It's... It's crazy here, but uh, hopefully it's coming through good to you guys. So, verse 6. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Mitzrayim, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Yashrael shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that Yahuwah puts a difference between Mitzrayim and Yashrael. And all these your servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get you out and all the people that follow you. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe. Okay, so this is, this is very... So when he says, and he went out from Pharaoh in great anger, who is that? Moshe or uh, Pharaoh? Who is that? So I don't understand I that part. Mo- oh, no, this is... This is uh... This is what I think they're still, he's like, they're still in the same thing where he said, I never see your face again. He was like walking away from Pharaoh. This is like, like he heard all this during the, he heard this all like during the, when he was, after he said. Moshe was in great anger? Yeah, he like, he's probably really mad, right? He's like, he heard all this, right? And Mo, Pharaoh's like, don't come back or you're dying. He's probably just walking out of the tent, of the castle or whatever. Yeah, but I, angry. like your mom said, Nicole, she says that it's Moshe here that's in great anger. Right, Moshe's walking out angry. Angry. Why would he be angry? Who's he angry at? The, the entire situation, Pharaoh. Um, the, uh, he's a frustrated man, right? He's like, he's like, watch his homeland, get this is, his people. Well, he's he's at the end of it as well. I mean, it's like Yah says, do this, do this, do this, and I mean, this guy just keeps rolling it. Now we're to the point where he's going to kill everybody. Like, <laughs> is it killing the humans? Yeah. So okay, and he went out for Pharaoh in great anger, and Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Yashrael out of his land. Dude, his servants were on their knees begging Pharaoh to let him go. I, I don't know would they be on their knees. They'd have to be on their stomachs since he's 18 inches high, so their knees would still be higher than he would. <laughs> he's going to have to be. This dude is only 18 inches. They were inches. bowing down, dude. They were, they were begging with everything chest. they had to let this dude go. <laughs> They knew something was about to happen. All right, any commandments? Nothing. No. All right, so if you're still bearing with us, we're only going to do one more chapter here because we know this is it's annoying for us. It's probably annoying for you. But maybe it's peaceful. I don't know. First of all, uh, chapter 12, verse 1. And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe and El Aaron in the land of Mitzrayim, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the assembly of Yashrael, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. You guys know what I'm. You guys know what I'm hearing here. Passover. There's a command. There's a command. Yeah, no, there's a command here. Okay, so here we go. So we let's go back. And Yahweh spoken to Moshe and El Ero on the land of Mitzrayim, saying, "This month, what month are we in? We're month two now, right? First month, right? And so we are in the first month." Shall be unto you beginning of months. Are we right? Yeah, yeah, Okay. 
Uh, it shall be the first month of the year to you. That's what it just said. And okay. your mom is so intelligent. She just tells us all these things and we look down and it's right there. Okay, three. Speak ye unto the assembly of Yashrael, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole multitude of the assembly of Yashrael shall kill it in the evening. And they, they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and matzah. What is matzah? Uh, unleavened, unleavened bread. bread. Unleavened bread. And what's it saying here? Yeah, unleavened bread. Uh, and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. What did your guys say? Boiled with water. Boiled with water. At all, but roasted in fire, his head with his legs, and his inward parts. In what? And his inward parts. Inward parts. All right. They made that really hard for some reason. Pertinence. Yeah, the sephir is just, it's hard core. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remains of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is Yahuwah's pe Pesach. So we got several commands here, several of them. Like, several, you have one command with a whole bunch of different things that we got to do inside of this command. Right? This is the, the ultimate right. command is observe pes Passover. Right, like 16A, 16B. Right. We, we're going to have to spend a little time on this after this and put this together. For... Let me make sure. Okay. For I will pass through the land of Mitzram this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Mitzram, both man and beast, and against all the Eloi of Mitzram. It says Eloi of Mitzram. What is that? Mighty ones. The, yeah, the male singular tense of Elohim. I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. And the blood shall be to you for a mark upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Mitzram. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to Yahuwah throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat matzah. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eats kamatz from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Yashrael. Okay, so we have another we have another Passover and then keep the feast of unleavened bread. Yep, so we have Passover and the other commandment is the feast of unleavened bread. And we will update our Google Doc after this and put those in. Um, and in the first day there shall be a holy assembly, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy assembly to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And ye shall guard the feast of Matzah. For in this same, self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Mitzram. Therefore shall ye guard this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In, in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, ye shall eat matzah. Until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no kamats. What are kamats? What did you say in your uh, Leaven bread. Leaven bread. Found in your houses, for whosoever eats that which is in kamatz, leavened bread, even that soul shall be cut off from the assembly of Yashrael, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing but kamatz, in all your habitations shall ye eat matzah. Then Moshe called for all the elders of Yashrael and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Pesach. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until morning. For Yahuwah will pass through to smite the Mitzram, and when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, Yahuwah will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall guard this thing for an ordinance to you and to your sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye are come to the land which Yahuwah will give, according as he promised that ye shall guard this service. And it shall come to pass when your children says, say unto you, what mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of Yahuwah's Pesach who passed over the houses of the children of Yashrael and Mitzram when he smote the Mitzram and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshiped. 
And the children of Yashrael went away and did as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe and Aaron. So did they. And it came to pass that at midnight, Yahuwah smote all the firstborn in the land of Mitzram, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne until the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all of Mitzram, and there was a great cry in Mitzram, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. So this was a dead, this is a killing of everything. You, you had a male cat, he dead. He male, the firstborn of the of the dogs, he's dead. Uh, goldfish, it's dead. Whatever you have, it's it's all dead if it's the firstborn. Um, 31. And he called for Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Yashrael, and go, serve Yahuwah as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. <laughs> and the Mitzram were urgent upon the, the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Yashrael did according to the word of Moshe. And they borrowed of the Mitzram jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. I don't think they it borrowed. Wasn't really borrowed, yeah. Yeah, no, they stole it all. They pl plundered the place. And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the sight of Mitzram, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Mitzram. So in other words, they bound Hasatan so he couldn't sit there and like stop that action from happening. <laughs> yeah, they had basically took all of Mitzram. That's the stuff. last thing he wanted to have happen, right? To equip the people Hasatan of this. Was like, no, my yeah. people. Yeah. And the children of Yashrael journeyed from Ram Ramak to Kuklap, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. Okay, so there were 600,000 men besides children, and you also have women, which I don't think that counts. Um, and you also have slaves, right? You have all of the slaves that are coming out of Mitzrayim. Right. So there's a, there's a ton of different people. It's like everybody that was held captive by Pharaoh, all of a sudden these people are leaving. They're like, yeah, let's go. So oh, they, yeah. they what? The freedom train. Yeah, freedom, freedom train, let's roll. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even much, even very much cattle. And they baked mats of cakes of the dough, which they brought forth out of Mitzrayim. For it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Mitzrayim, and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Yashrael, who dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim, and in the land of Canaan, they and their fathers, was four hundred and thirty years. And it came to pass at the end of four hundred of the four hundred and thirty years, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the hosts of Yahuwah went out from the land of Mitzrayim. It is a night to be much observed unto Yahuwah for bringing them out of the land of Mitzrayim, that this, that this is that night of Yahuwah to be observed of all children of Yashrael in all generations. So, is this, or do we end up with another command here? Uh, um, it is a night to be observed unto Yahuwah for bringing them out. Okay, so I think we have another command here. Yeah, I think remember there, there's fault. There's like the, Pass the, Passover. The Passover laws then remember the Passover. Then we have unleavened bread, and then we have this, which is. So like, we're going to end up with three, at least three commandments I in this chapter. I think there's here. one more coming up as well. We'll see. Okay, and so where am I? Uh, let's see. You're at forty-three. 43. Yeah. Okay, and Yahuwah said unto Moshe and Aaron, "This is the ordinance of the Pesach." There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is brought, bought for money, when you have circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Okay, there's another commandment, right? You're not to eat the Passover if you're not circumcised. That's the command. A right. foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. You shall not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. There's a ton of commandments in this one. We're going to be at this a, a little bit. And all the assembly of Yashrael shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with you and will keep the Pesach to Yahuwah, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born of the land for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One Torah shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourns among you. I think that's a command. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was saying the next command. So there might be fire here. Thus did all the children of Yashrael, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the same self same day that Yahuwah did bring the children of Yashrael out of the land of Mitzram by their armies. Okay. 
And so for everybody who this rain is crazy, I am super, super sorry. Um, I'm not going to keep you guys very long because of this rain. But we are going to go back through here and we are going to dial these commandments in here and try to get a kind of an idea on this. I think there's going to be a four or five on here and we shall see. So with that, I think we will conclude our rainy day uh, extravaganza. And anybody have anything? Read your Bibles. Have a good evening. Shalom. 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 Perfect. Shalom. Shalom. All right. Bye, everyone.